Hello, and welcome back to the second day of SDSS. If you joined us yesterday, I hope you enjoyed some interesting sessions and maybe heard some new perspectives. So today we have another full lineup, and we're going to begin our day with a community organized session uh, called Street View Imagery. Have we answered all the questions with it? What's left to do? And I'd like to introduce the co-organizers of this session, Koichi Ito and Winston Yap, both of the Department of Architecture at the National University of Singapore. And so I'll hand it over to you while we're just bringing our final speakers on. Thank you so much, Kitty. So Hello, everyone, and greetings to everyone from various time zone. Uh, firstly, uh, I want to give a heartfelt thank you to all of you uh, joining us today from you know, different parts of the globe. Uh, so today, uh, Winston and I, representing the Urban Analytics Lab at the National University of Singapore, have the pleasure of hosting three promising researchers who will shed light on their recent findings. So before we dive into our, uh, their presentations, I'd like to provide a background on our chosen topic for this session. Still view imagery, how we answer all the questions, what's left to do. Uh, following that, Winston will share insights about the endeavors at the Urban Analytics Lab and also present our esteemed speakers for the day. So now, um, let's dive right, in, right into it. So over the past several years, uh, Street View imagery platforms such as Google Street View, Mapillary, and Tencent have broadened the coverage at, at a fast, fast pace and uh, covering a vast majority of global cities. Uh, probably, the growth and sophistication of computer vision models uh, have been exponential. From rudimentary edge detection to contemporary deep learning based models of object detection, segmentation, and groundbreaking zero shot segmentation, the advance advancements are monumental. In technolo technological leap in com computational resources, from robust GPUs uh, in our everyday laptops to expansive cloud computing capabilities. So a glimpse at this spot uh, here uh, underscores a search in research using street view imagery. So until 2010, the cumulative papers stood ar around uh, 100 papers. Fast forward to 2022, and we saw a staggering 300 plus papers in just a year. And the is already hinting at nearing uh, the 400 mark. So in the next spot, an intriguing Intriguing observation can be made um, when examining the publication platforms over the past, uh, last decade. Um, <laughs> the initial research predominantly made its way to technical uh, conference proceedings like lecture notes on com in computer science, ISPRS archives, and the I IEEE conference on computer vision and pattern recognition. Yet there's been a noticeable shift towards applied interdisciplinary and social science channels in recent times, such as landscape and urban planning, computer, computer environment and urban systems and cities. So this is indicative of applied scientists harnessing social imagery to tackle real world challenges. Next. Uh, to shed light on the specifics, I've also charted the growth of trajectory of certain niche topics within SPI, greenery stands out showing consistent growth, while perception studies saw a notable start in 2021, and lastly, walkability studies follow the trend in 2022. So in essence, the SPI research domain is booming with a tangible people towards applied social sciences. Uh, this rapid expansion and saturation of various subdomains poses a question, is this upward trajectory sustainable? So our, our aim today is to deep dive into the recent rise in SPI research and inspire the spatial data science community by discussing cutting edge studies. Uh, on that note, I'll pass the button to Vincent who will share some key SPI research topics and introduce our speakers for the day. Okay, uh, thank you Koichi. So uh, first I would like to introduce our group we are a young and vibrant research group at the National University of Singapore, founded in 2019 by our director, Professor Philip Bileski. As a group, we are all excited about the power of big geospatial data for urban applications and how we can use emerging technology in analytical workflows to design better and more sustainable cities. 
The lab has been quite active in SVI research in recent years, and I wish to take this opportunity to introduce some trends of research in this domain. One area of research that we are quite serious about is open data, and we have developed numerous data standards. For example, studies employing street view imagery for large scale sensing of cities have become increasingly popular. However, its quality has often been overlooked. To address this gap, we de developed the first comprehensive quality assessment framework that can be applied on street view imagery. Another aspect that has been under examined is how different imaging approaches factor in computing urban indicators. For example, it is unclear whether panoramic or perspective imagery should be used for some tasks. To answer these questions, we undertake a comparative study of different imagery approaches and their implications for downstream urban applications. Tying closely to standards is the use of modern machine learning and geo-AI to sense cities at large. Urban noise is another key consideration for dense urban environments. The Urban Soundscape project on the left utilizes machine learning to map images of streetscapes to expected noise levels. For example, in the map of Singapore, the red areas correspond to areas with high urban noise. Urban visual information can also help us to uncover hidden patterns in the spatial st structure of cities. The Urbanity project employs open crowdsource view images to examine how urban visual information propagates along urban networks in various cities. It demonstrates how we can uncover a dimension of the spatial structure of cities just from visual information on streetscapes. In addition, we are also quite excited about the possibility of SVI for active mobility planning. For example, using SVI to automate the assessment of the design of public open spaces or investigating the walkability and bikeability conditions for urban precincts by sensing, for example, the amount of greenery at different locations. Last but not least, we are also quite excited about another work that we are currently developing, an open, global, and comprehensively enriched streetscapes data set, which consists of 7 million crowdsourced street-level images over 677 cities to support urban science research. Thank you very much for allowing us the opportunity to introduce our lab's SVI research. Moving on, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our distinguished speakers for this series, who will each present their recent cutting-edge SVI research. First, we have Professor Yu Hao Kang, who is Assistant Professor in GIS Science at the Department of Geography, University of Southern Carolina. He draws from a wide experience from both academia and industry, from organizations such as MIT's Sensible Cities Lab, Google, Mobile, and Peking University. He even founded several nonprofits and startups. Today, he will be presenting his latest paper on assessing differences in safety perception using Geo AI and SVI across neighborhoods in Stockholm, Sweden. Yuhao, thank you so much for joining us today. Next, we have Professor Peng Yuan Liu, Assistant Professor in Geo AI at the Nanjing University of Information Science and Technology. Peng Yuan draws from a wide experience in research and industry, working as a senior data scientist as well as postdoctoral research fellow at the NUS Urban Analytics Lab. Today, he will be sharing his recent work on leveraging SVI and graph deep learning models to predict outdoor thermal comfort, which he co-leads at NUS. Thank you, Peng Yuan, for joining us today. And last but not least, we have Professor Mohammed Ibrahim, lecturer in spatial data science at the University of Leeds, an affiliated researcher with both the Center for Spatial Analysis and Policy and Leeds Institute for Data Analytics. 
Before joining Leeds, he was postdoctoral researcher in human mobi mobility at the Alan Turing Institute. He is also the inventor and founder of Urban Eye, a company you, which develops cutting-edge urban AI for public good. We are really glad to have all our speakers with us today. Next, I will outline the uh, structure for the next half an hour, which will be a 10-minute presentation by each speaker on their research. We will provide some reminders at the 9-minute mark. If time permits, we will have a combined Q&A at the end, moderated by Koichi and myself. Without further ado, I will pass the time on to Peng Yuan to start his presentation. Yes, so great. Um, so, <clears throat> hello everyone. So my name is Peng Yuan Liu and uh, I'm working at Nanjing University of Information Science and Technology. Um, previously, I was a postdoc in the Urban Analytics Lab in the National University of Singapore. And today, my uh, presentation topic is uh, Towards Human-Centric GOAI, Leveraging uh, Cross-Source Data for urban site work planning. Um, this presentation is based on a recent uh, published paper in Sustainable Cities and Society. And uh, in this slide, I basically show uh, a graph abstract of the research, which hopefully I will be able to de debunk each part of the abstract in the following um, slides. And my presentation agenda today uh, briefly divided into three three parts. The first is about research background and motivation. Second is the is the res a research itself, and then we will draw some conclusions from this research. First, uh, to study uh, to to start with the, some background of the research. Um, why we're doing research is because when I was in a new US, when I often walk to the to the to the lab every day, and uh, we had the, this kind of hues along the path walking to the lab. Then sometimes when it's the off class time, there are a lot of like crowd people on the sidewalks. Then it brings me to this concept that uh, honestly, the sense of crowdness, crowdnesses of the road and the fear or the willingness to walk in the sun or the slope conditions of the roads, all these kind of factors, including the temperature, uh, can heavily affect human comfort when people walking on the selected road. And also as pedestrian walking is a sequential manner of the walking activities, such sequential manner of the pedestrians are always experiencing the interconnected, uh, interconnected urban space. Uh, such experience reinforce a dynamic uh, perceptual mode through the actual movement uh, between the space. What that means, showing in this uh, GIF here, basically meaning that when people walking on the on the road, uh, the surrounding urban urban object will be constant changing. Imagine you're walking on the path. Uh, the 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 pedestrians you encountered along the path you're walking uh, could be always changing. And also, when you're walking on the path, you you at the time step one, you might have some trees around you. At time step two, you might just have buildings without trees. And also uh, at times three, maybe there was like cars driving past you. And all these kind of factors contribute to our comfort while walking. And uh, how do we capture such a dynamic nature of the walking experience? In this study, we use the street view images to capture such a, a, a dynamic sense. However, in addition to the, to the visual uh, fit experiences along people's walking. Uh, essentially, when you're walking on the road, people actually perceive a multi-sensory experience. Those kind of experience, including the SEMA experience, also, the, for example, the SEMA experiences, also, also the surrounding traffic and the, the, the other buildings or the roads are always uh, contribute to the state of comfort, uh, comfort when people navigating or, or path funding in the, in the urban spaces. So uh, in the next few slides, I will show how do we uh, combine all the tools that we have to capture such a multi-sensory experiences. Um, however, when it's related to the outdoor comfort studies, when I say outdoor comfort studies, it's always put its focus on the same, uh, same, comfort experience, same comfort experiences. And it's often involved in some professional and uh, if not professional, maybe they are very complex equipment and sensors to use. 
uh, in their study. Uh, in, in, in our study, we try to get rid of those kind of professional equipment. Uh, instead, we use the applications or the equipments that are easily accessible uh, from the, from the uh, people's everyday life so that uh, we hope in, our, in the future people can contribute the data through those easily access, accessible equipment uh, for building such a, 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 a advanced GOAI model. Um, so the contribution of our research uh, are three parts. Firstly, we introduce a human-centric dynamic graphs construction method using the street view images. That brings the pedestrian as the central component in the quantitative concept computational model. Uh, we hope our research is to advance the studies of you using the user-contributed cross-source data to analyze individual human comfort. And we propose such a spatial temple explicit GOAI model co uh, called GraphSet uh, LSTM to capture the dynamic nature of the pedestrians and support the near real-time uh, personal comfort predictions. Um, again, this is the overall workflow. It consists of um, three, four parts. Data collection part on the showing on the left part of this figure. And then we're trying to build the dynamic graphs from the street view images taken and uh, feed all the data into the GI, GOEI model that I just mentioned to predict the human comfort into three, uh, three different classes, comfortable, neutral, or uncomfortable. Um, the data collection steps consist of a series of tools, including the Apple Watch based app called Cozy, which is developed from the uh, Beauty and Data Science Lab from National University of Singapore. Uh, then we use the noise meter to capture the surrounding noise uh, of the pedestrian when, when they are walking on the selected uh, road. In addition, we use the uh, <coughs> uh, 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 a phone based application called uh, Lutz Light, Night, uh, Light Meter to record the sound intensity along the walking uh, activities. Uh, when people record their comfort along the walking, we use the GoPro to capture the surrounding street view image when people uh, push the button to give their feedback of their personal at the time. Um, essentially, this is uh, just a showcase of how the data is collected. We, uh, we have the noise meter, we have the phone to record the sound intensity, and we're walking with pedestrians using the GoPro along the path to take the street view images. Uh, when we take the street Im images, we can see that uh, at different kind of location point, how the urban objects surrounding, surrounding uh, 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 the pedestrian are different. And we use the uh, pre-trained Deep Lab V3 on the cityscape to semantically um, extract the urban object information from the images. We also use the uh, Prechen Olu uh, V5 to, to calculate how many cars and how many other pedestrians are on the selected path. Um, here's just a showcase of the data collected. Uh, the top left is all the, the participant heart, heart rate along the route uh, with the highlighted mean, and top right is the plot of the collected uh, comfort feedback with the highlight mean. And the image on the center is the somatic classes of the surrounding urban uh, spatial objects extracted from the street view images. And the bottom image is the elevation. Uh, so as I just mentioned, the, the selected path in the uh, NUS campus has a lot of hills. So you can see the elevation varies along the uh, sidewalk path. Um, build on the... Uh, Street view images taken, we build such a dynamic graph. Uh, we can conceptualize that into three different images. At timestamp T, maybe when you, people walking, uh, the car is, is driving past, or he or she might encounter other pedestrians on the road. Maybe on the timestamp one, only other pedestrians will be on the road, but there's no cars. On timestamp T plus M, maybe there are nothing uh, in vision of their walking except other, other fixed urban objects. Through such a process, we basically conceptualize the dynamic na nature using such a dynamic graphs uh, by only changing the agency matrix of the graph constructed. And then we fit the graph together with the data into the graph search uh, LSTM model to predict the, the human comfort. 
uh, we show that our model is very effective in predict the outdoor comfort, despite we consider the cross source data is may may not always be as robust as professional equipment. And uh, we did the, the further testing that um, uh, with one additional uh, participant walking in the campus, uh, showing the effectiveness of our our model by predicting uh, most uh, comfort class uh, accurately. But we also identify certain areas uh, where the arrows are most clustered. Uh, we think uh, because that's the specific areas in a US campus are designed to let the wind to flow past the space. So people might actually feel comfortable despite it has uh, the slope conditions of the road is quite is quite bad in that uh, areas. But with the wind, people might just feel comfortable. That the uncertainty that in our model. So just a quick contribution of our research. Uh, we believe the crop source data is the key in developing personalized applications. Uh, we believe the use of human-centered graphs created from the street view image breaks the new ground in developing human-centered GUI methods for urban studies. And uh, uh, we created a pipeline for contributing user-generated data is, is crucial in delivering a robust GUI method. And uh, we find, we're trying to find a way to combine crop source data and other data. Uh, we believe those ways can further enhance the, our model performance. And uh, here is just a quick overview of my research. And uh, thank you very much for your time. I'm looking forward to the further discussions. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Winston and Koichi. Um, and sorry for the technical issue. Um, uh, it's really my great pleasure to have this presentation uh, entitled Assessing Differences in Safety Perceptions Using GeoAI and the Survey Across Neighborhoods in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, I'm Yu Hao Kang. Uh, I'm an assistant professor uh, at the University of South Carolina. This is actually a collaborative work uh, with researchers from KTH Sweden, uh, University of Wisconsin Madison, and uh, MIT Sensible City Lab. So this project or this paper follows the idea of human-centered geospatial data science. Spatial data science. It contains two uh, two missions. So one is to understand our human subjective experience at place, such as how we can measure human subjective perceptions of place, like whether a neighborhood looks safe, lively, beautiful, etc and human emotions at place or human cognition of place. Um, the second mission of human-centered geospatial data science refers to develop trustworthy and ethical GI science technology to make sure that geo AI and other technologies uh, do not produce, uh, do not harm our human society, such as observing and mitigating bias in GIS, protect human geo privacy, and building explainable geo AI. So in this work, uh, I primar we primarily focus on like understanding human perceptions of place and also observe and mitigating different forms of bias. So you may ask why it is necessary to develop human-centered geospatial data science. Uh, because one challenge is that geographic phenomena are always treated as functions of a set of physical settings while lacking considerations of the human subjective experience in existing geospatial data science. As Professor Yifu Tuan mentioned, people think that geography is about capitals, landforms, and so on. But it is also about place, its emotional tone, social meaning, and generative potential. So how can we enrich geospatial data science with different uh, human subjective experience of place? Traditionally, to measure human perception, subjective perception of place, we may leverage um, approaches such as self-reports, surveys, and mental maps. However, these approaches may have some limitations, such as they are restricted in small scales, they are labor-intensive, and they are time-consuming. Are there better ways to leverage the power of geospatial big data and geo-AI to measure uh, our human subjective perception of place. So here, uh, we introduce using geospatial data science approaches to measure perception, including street view images and deep learning. So this is the computational workflow to measure human perception. Um, the hypothesis of this workflow is that 
um, because three view images can uh, represent the detailed built environment uh, at urban at, at human eye level. So participants perceptions of these street view images um, are treated as a proxy of their perceptions of the built environment. So following this assumption, uh, we further developed uh, an online survey uh, launched in Stockholm and we recruit participants to ask their questions um, by comparing two um, different street view images. Uh, and they need to answer the question, which place looks safe or which place looks less safe. And they need to pick up the image that looks less safe or safe. It should be noted that uh, this is a localized survey because all the participants uh, that take this survey live in Stockholm. And we also recorded participants age and gender groups. So by doing so, we may further examine uh, the differences among different gender and demographic groups. In addition to such a localized uh, uh, survey, we also have a place pulse data set, which reflect um, people's general perceptions from six dimensions as a global scale. So after collecting human uh, perceptions, uh, we can then train a deep learning model to measure human subjective perceptions of a given of any given street view image. So this is a computational framework to learn the such perceptual scores. Here, I would like to show several examples of our safety perception results. Uh, you can see that th there are two groups of images uh, which are predicted as high safety scores and with low safety scores. And I think it may fit our common sense. And we plot a, um, we create a map of uh, such safety perceptions uh, in Stockholm. And you can see the distributions in Stockholm. We further examined what variables contribute to safety perceptions. And we found that high quality of the neighborhood's visual appearance and the inner city views and prosperous economy are positively associated with uh, high safety scores. While certain types of urban facilities, such as a uh, gas station, might be negatively associated with safety perceptions. So to summarize, like this, such a computational workflow to um, measure human perceptions have several advantages, such as high coverage and volume, uh, relatively low data bias, cost effectiveness and time effectiveness, and and more importantly, uh, uh, eye level scenery, which reflect our human eye levels of the perception. So next, we move to the second mission to develop trustworthy and ethical GI science technology. Uh, GI, geospatial data science need to be used in a responsible and ethical way that deserves the trust of users and society. But to, so far, limited strategies have been developed. Here, I want to show an uh, example of unethical use of uh, AI. As you can see that we can ask ChatGPT to generate some literary, literature review. But actually, uh, this reference is a fake reference. And there have been different forms uh, that exist in uh, different geospatial artificial intelligence approaches, such as data bias, model bias, perception bias, population bias, and gender bias. So back to our safety perception work um, that we measure the human subjective safety perceptions of a neighborhood is a place that appears safe, really felt safe by its residents. So this is a collaborative work with city planning office of city, city of Stockholm. They were running a traditional survey to collect human safety perceptions for every three years. So actually there might be exist a perception bias considering like how survey and GeoAI approaches were conducted. Uh, so here are the sample outputs of safety perceptions that predicted using GeoAI. And I also show the survey uh, that uh, using uh, that collects safety perceptions in Stockholm. So here uh, you on the right, you can see the map. And if you compare this map be, uh, with the previous map, you can see there are some differences. So we term this as um, perceptual perception bias, 
uh, refers to the difference between GeoAI and uh, survey-based uh, safety perceptions. And after uh, characterizing the characteristics, the properties of this perception bias, we found that GeoAI-based safety perceptions uh, more reflect our instant impressions of the built environment, which indicates that uh, GeoAI based may more re rely on visual appearance of the built environment. While survey based safety perceptions may re more rely on more reflect people's daily experience of neighborhoods um, with local in knowledge encoded, but not necessarily reflect on built environment. So these are the different characteristics of this two approaches. In addition to perception bias, we also examined some other forms of bias, such as you know, population bias and spatial bias. As I mentioned that when we conducting the survey, we also collected the demographic groups information. And, and there have been a global model that, that was trained uh, uh, based on the data across uh, uh, the world. So we compare these different uh, demographic groups as these different uh, models to try to identify potential model bias. We find that there is difference among population groups, groups but not significant, and localized model performs better, which in other words, our model like trained based on the data in Stockholm perform better in capturing local resident safety perceptions. To conclude, the geospatial data science approach may supplement the traditional approach for marrying safety perceptions um, and its characteristics need to be considered before using it into real world practice. So this paper has been published on landscape and urban planning. Uh, so feel free to download and read it. Um, so that's all, thank you very much. And I would also want to thank for all my co-authors uh, listed here. So this is a collaborative work uh, between me and other research teams from different universities. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yu Hao, for the really interesting presentation.